these have definitely changed our lives. Some things for good, some things for the not so good. And the some things for the not so good for everyone. But these and other digital devices like iPads and laptops, etc., can be especially not so good for kids. So how do you manage digital devices as a follower of Jesus? How do you help your kids and grandkids manage them? Because technology can and is causing a lot of issues in people's lives, especially in the lives of kids. What are some of the dangers to your mind, to your body, to your spirit from digital devices? The dangers of digital devices. I can waste my time. I know I have wasted my time on digital devices, and time is something once it's gone, you can't get it back. The most recent stats concerning media usage are somewhat horrifying in a sense. Phone usage alone, and this is from August 11th, 2023, on average, people check their phones 344 times a day and spend an average of 4.8 hours on their phone. That's phone usage only. We are definitely living in a digital age of distraction, and I can easily waste my time. You can easily waste your time. And we are in danger of becoming, uh, or we are becoming, spiritually, mentally, and physically dull as we spend more and more time in a digital world. Common Sense Media says 13 to 18 year olds are on some sort of mobile device eight hours and 39 minutes a day. That almost doesn't seem realistic, but think about it. Phones, iPads, laptops, video games, all consuming and potentially wasting our time in many cases. And that's really the goal of all sources of entertainment. They are designed to be addictive, including TV, to keep you constantly engaged in this digital world, whether it's good for us or not, because they don't care if it's good for you or not. God, however, does care about you. And through the Apostle Paul, he speaks about the use of your time. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 and 16. Therefore, watch carefully how you walk. That's how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, redeeming the time. And that's an interesting phrase there. Literally, it means buying back your time, using your time wisely because the days are evil. So you can waste your time or you can redeem your time, but you can't do both. Now, wasting time on digital devices may or may not be sin, depending on what you're using the digital device for. But it's likely often not the best use of your time, no matter what. And if evolution is true, then everybody's thumbs ought to be getting bigger and bigger with all the time we spend on digital devices. I can be led astray by ungodly values. Ungodly value systems of greed, improper sexual behavior, and being unkind, along with a host of other negative behaviors, is promoted online constantly and consistently. And if that's what you fill your mind with, you can soon be led away from Jesus and goodness into a world of, uh, that promises, this world promises you happiness and fulfillment with very little effort on your part, but in reality won't make you happy or fulfilled. The Apostle Paul tells us not to have the same mindset as many have that don't follow Jesus. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Don't be like the people of this world, but let God change the way you think. Then you will know how to do everything that is good and pleasing to Him. Unbelievers, and the media is full of unbelievers, want you to think like them, and they want you not to think like God. But which offers eternal hope? Which offers lasting joy and happiness? Which offers true fulfillment? Certainly not the ungodly and their values. I can be drawn into unproductive arguments. Proverbs chapter 26, verse 21. Charcoal keeps the coals glowing. Wood keeps the fire burning. And troublemakers keep arguments alive. And the internet is full of troublemakers stirring up arguments all the time. 
I can be tempted to exaggerate, you know, tempted to pad the truth about my life. Proverbs 12, 22, Yahweh hates people who tell lies, but he is pleased with those who tell the truth. I can become addicted to the approval of others. We're talking about the dangers that digital technology has for us. The science behind social media, the reason it's so addicting, the reason you're looking at your phone all the time, is we all generally, we want the approval of other people. And that's what happens when you get a like. (laughs) Well, here's the thing, though. You cannot be a servant of Jesus and at the same time be seeking everyone's approval. It doesn't work. Solomon warns us, Ecclesiastes 7 verse 21, don't pay attention to everything people say. In other words, seek approval from God, not from people. I can feel socially isolated. What's been discovered is connecting less with people in person, and spending more time connecting online leads to depression and feeling socially isolated. Now, there are exceptions to this. If you're homebound or you're geographically separated, you're you're far apart, then electronic connection can be a very positive thing. But for most, heavy social media use causes you to feel socially isolated the opposite of what it promises to do. It promises to make you feel socially connected, but isn't that what evil is like? It promises one thing and then delivers uh, another. I'm not saying all social media is evil, of course, but overuse of it is not good for you, and it leads to depression. Now, it's interesting. The only thing that's been proven to counter becoming depressed because of the high level of social media use is just as high a level of face-to-face interaction with others. In other words, the cure for using a lot of social media is meeting with others face-to-face, spending just as much time, you're curing that depressive anxiety by spending just as much time in face-to-face, real-life interaction with others. I can ignore my most important relationships. Not managing these well can bring into your life the very real possibility, as we said, of loneliness, depression, isolation, and anxiety. We can become so engaged in our digital devices that we ignore real people. Cell phones bring you closer to a person far away, which is very awesome at times, but they can also take you away from someone who's in the very same room with you. You can be sitting at a table with your family or your friends, but you're more interested in what some person on a screen is saying. Isabel, a freshman at the University of Central Oklahoma, says, a lot of my friends are addicted to their phones. I'm trying to have a conversation with them, and they're scrolling through TikTok. I wish they would put down their phone and have a conversation with me instead of looking at stuff online. They're really not listening. Can you hear the kind of the desperate uh, sadness in her voice there, in her words that she said? Surrounded by people, but they're engaged with their phones instead of those that are in the room with them. I feel for her and so many young people who've never experienced a world without these. In Isaiah 58, 7, the prophet says, Do not ignore, do not hide yourself away from your own flesh and blood. And isn't that a real danger with digital devices? Your kids hiding from real life people or you retreating into a digital world? I can be distracted from what's most important. This can be, it can be or it can become very easily a little G God in your life. Do you control your phone or does your control does your control or does your phone control you? 71% of Americans, the first thing they do when they wake up is they check this. And 74% of Americans say they feel uncomfortable if they forget their phone at home. Jesus is close friends, maybe even best friends with Lazarus and his two sisters, Mary and Martha. 
And Luke records this about Mary. Luke chapter 10, verse 39. Mary was sitting at Jesus' feet and listening to him teach. Mary's sister, Martha, she wasn't listening to Jesus teach because she was distracted. Now these are huge distractions. You need to put them away so you can listen to Jesus speak to you here on uh, Sunday morning or whatever the day of the week you may be engaging with us here online. And this should be put away all throughout your week when you're setting aside time to pray, that is to talk to God and to listen to God, unless you're listening to the Bible on your phone. And what would your life look like if you managed this, your digital life, well? And what would it look like for your kids if you helped them manage it well? 80% of educators say the more screen time, the more kids in the digital world, the worse their behavior gets in school. And kids who are allowed to take their phones into their bedrooms, they average one hour of sleep less a night. And they're very likely engaging in ungodly, unproductive, unhealthy, even sometimes dangerous behavior. Your kids shouldn't have their phones in their bedrooms by themselves. There are many physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual traps when it comes to digital media. And we have to be aware of them, and we have to be disciplined in our use of it and how our kids use it. But should we abandon all technology then? Well, of course not. It, it can be good, but we should learn to use it wisely, and we should remain diligent concerning its use by our kids and our grandkids and kids we have influence over. The positives of digital devices. I can use it to worship God. I can listen to worship music on my phone. I can even sing along if I want to. I can read the Psalms from the Bible on my phone to help me worship God. For example, Psalm 25, verse 1, and verses 4 through 6 and 8 through 12. I offer you my heart, Yahweh God, and I trust you. Guide me by your truth and instruct me. Yahweh, remember, you have always been patient and kind. Forget each wrong I did when I was young. You are honest and merciful, and you lead humble people to do what is right and to stay on your path. In everything you do, you are kind and faithful. Be true to your name, Yahweh, by forgiving each one of my terrible sins. You will show the right path to all who worship you. So you can worship by reading the Psalms. You can worship by listening to music. You can worship through giving from your digital devices. You can give financially to Jesus' kingdom work through Holly Church. I can use it to encourage others. This can be used in a very positive way to encourage others. And we're especially told to encourage other believers. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 24 through 25. We should keep on encouraging each other to be thoughtful and to do helpful things. Some people have given up the habit of meeting for worship, but we must not do that. We should keep on encouraging each other, especially since you know that the day of the Lord's coming is getting closer. We see here that we should encourage fellow believers to be thoughtful, to be helpful. We should encourage fellow believers to be engaged with their church. I can use it to help me grow spiritually. I can listen to the Bible on my phone. I can listen to my messages on my phone. I can check out what's on the church's you know, Facebook, Instagram, and X, formerly known as Twitter pages. I can watch and I can listen to videos on Holly Church's YouTube channel. Now, if you haven't done so already, I would encourage you to like and follow Holly Church on Facebook, Instagram, and X, and to subscribe to Holly Church on YouTube. Psalm 137.7 says, Keep me from paying attention to what is worthless and help me find life by living for you. It's your choice. You can spend your time just looking at worthless stuff or sinful stuff, or you can look at things that are worthwhile on your digital devices. I can use it to pray for others. You can call someone and you can pray with them over the phone. 
That is awesome. You can leave them a prayer on a voicemail if they don't pick up. You can send them a prayer via text or email or messenger, and there's probably a lot of other ways out there that I don't know of that you can use digital devices to pray for someone. They're great prayer tools to use. James 5.16 says, pray for each other. I can use it to share my faith in Jesus. You can use this to invite someone to church with you, whether it's an in-person service or an online service. You can use this to talk to somebody about Jesus. My wife and I baptized uh, a young lady, and we talked to her in person. We had in-person conversation with her, but her being baptized was the result of not only in-person conversations, but also long text conversations with my wife. So the phone and other digital devices can be very beneficial, help you bring people to Jesus. You know, but it can also be very detrimental. It can cause a lot of problems if it's not managed well. Now, some crucial conversations that you have, they should never be had by email or text. They should be had face-to-face. And one such crucial conversation, because we're talking about stuff that matters for your kids, one crucial conversation you need to have with your kids is the ground rules you have for their use of digital media. Now, here's some advice from some real-life flesh-and-blood kids to parents concerning cell phones. This is what the kids said, what teens think parents should know about phones. The first thing is make rules, but talk to your kids first. 15-year-old Caleb says, set up screen time limits, but talk about it first. He said, my parents came to me and said, hey, you're not doing anything wrong, but we're going to set time limits to your screen time. And they explained to him why, and it was to help him manage his phone usage, and he says this about screen time limits after they did that. I think it's helpful in being mindful with how I'm using my phone. Caleb warns against social media. He says, don't let kids have social media. Social media is not good. This is from a 15-year-old. He says, Uh, TikTok. He warns about TikTok being addictive. He says he had wasted tons of time on it. He warns about Instagram being not good for his friends, especially for his friends who are girls. Bottom line for him is this. Social media is not a good world to base your life off. Stella, she's 16. She says social media is not that necessary. It causes impatience because we need constant stimulation. Sometimes I have not used social media. It makes me feel better, calmer, not feel the need for constant stimulation. And I have more time to do things I like, maybe reading or talking to people in person. Almost every young person, I'm quoting, now this was from an article from April 13th, 2023, from the Oregonian newspaper, Online Edition. And almost every Every one of the young people, when they were asked what parents need to know about phones, every one of them said social media can be a real problem, bad, dangerous. And then they said, phone and social media breaks are important. Kyle, he's 16 years old. He says, right now I'm restricted from using my phone. It's been almost two weeks and I feel great. At first, I gave pushback. While I don't agree with taking away phones as punishment, it did make me realize how important phone and social media breaks are. I feel more energized. My sleep is better. I didn't realize how stressful social media pressure can be. Now, he goes on to say that parents do need to realize that phones are important to his age group for communicating with friends and family and for keeping their schedule straight and organized. But those two things are the two main things that kids say parents need to know about cell phones. Now, here is some biblically-based guidelines for managing technology as a follower of Jesus for you and for your kids. Healthy digital media usage. Model moderation in your own media usage. Parents, a lot of parents, you overuse digital media. So 
Uh, this message really convicted me. I have to say I was very convicted as I was preparing this message about my own use of digital media. In fact, while I was preparing this message, I realized one evening I had the TV on in front of me. I was listening to a podcast on my iPad, no, on my phone, sorry, on my phone, and then I had my iPad open and I was reading an article online. And that's just too much, you know, too much stimulation. So I'm starting new media usage rules for myself, more moderation. And most likely, you need to do so as well. Do not allow phones in the bedroom and set a specific time when you stop using your phones. Now, this is something most adults don't want to do. They want to have their phones in their bedrooms and they don't want to have a specific time they quit using their phones. Now, you're an adult. You can decide what you want to do, but I, I'm telling you, this is going to help you as a follower of Jesus. I have a set time in the evening. I quit using my phone unless one of my kids contacts me, and sometimes I don't even respond to them depending on what it is. Now, I do have my phone, full disclosure, I do have my phone in my bedroom because I use it to track my sleep, but I don't use it for anything else. Now, you might not be strong enough to have your phone in your bedroom. You might need to keep it in a separate room. And make sure you're turning off all screens at night and just use an alarm clock to wake up in the morning. Don't use your phone. Take seven-day digital breaks from social media. A seven-day social media detox, it improves mental well-being and it reduces the fear of FOMO, the fear of missing out. Engage in physical exercise, reading, and spending time with others. If you're moderating your digital usage, you have time for these important things. Develop a morning routine where you're talking to God first before your phone, you're looking at your phone, where you're reading your Bible first before you're looking at your phone, followed by some type of exercise. And if you'll do this, if you'll develop a morning routine, talking to God, reading your Bible, some form of exercise, even if it's 15, 20 minutes, before you get all engrossed on your digital media, digital, digital media devices, it's amazing how this one little change, not doing phone stuff first, will improve your uh, mental state of being. You know, doing life outside uh, of your screens keeps your brain happy. It keeps it happy and active. Social media can be good. It can be helpful. I'm not saying it's all bad because it's not, but it isn't a substitute for spending in-person time for, with others. It's not a substitute for reading. It's not a substitute for exercising. Experts say outside of work, two hours per day is a healthy time frame for screen time. So the first question you have to grapple with here is, do you need to make a change in your usage of digital devices? Now, most of us probably do somewhat. After you examine your own use of digital devices, then you're prepared, you're ready to talk to your kids about their usage. Now, I've given you guidance in this message, but parents or, or grandparents, you have to do the work of being your child's parent. That's your responsibility. And you have to do the, that work of, par of being a parent and guiding your kids in the proper use of technology, how to use it wisely. A book I would recommend for parents is The TechWise Family by Andy Crouch. A book I would recommend for all adults, uh, even older teenagers, is 12 Ways Your Phone is Changing You by Tony Rennick. One of the ways it's changed us is many, even people who used to read a lot, are not reading as much, and some people aren't reading at all. Not reading, it leads to a spiritual and mental dullness. So maybe make it your goal. This would be a great next step for you today. Make it your goal to read those two books by the end of this year. You say, well, I can't do that. Yes, you can. You can do it. I know you can do it. It's, it's a, like seven pages per day. And if you read seven pages per day, you'll have read two books by the end of this year. You know, seven pages, as I said, you can do that. Keep the book in the bathroom. Read it while you're brushing your teeth and doing other things in there. If you don't get through all seven pages, you know, put it by your bed and read, finish reading the, 
the pages you have left before you go to sleep. Or maybe read those seven pages and then you can reward yourself with some digital media time. Now, when non-Christians are concerned, and they are, there's articles all over the, the internet, all over newspapers. When non-Christians are concerned about the depression, about the loneliness, about the anxiety these devices can bring into our lives, it should be a wake-up call to Christians. Now, we should have been different using these digital devices from the very beginning, and hopefully you have been. But I think a lot of times we have not been different. But now that we know the spiritual dangers of them, the physical dangers of them, the mental dangers of them, we need to make sure we're using them wisely. We should be different. Our use of digital devices should be different from those who don't believe in Jesus. We should be different in a good way, a healthy way, from those who don't follow Jesus. Now, a few guys who don't follow Jesus who really helped usher in all this digital technology we have, uh, they have this to say about their own products. <laughs> in 2007, and think about how much more advanced technology is now in 2023 than it was in 2007. But in 2007, co-founder of Microsoft, you know, Bill Gates and his then-wife Melinda said they limited their kids to 45 minutes of video games a day during the week, and they allowed an extra hour on weekends, so hour 45 on the weekends per day. Now, this was in, in addition to the time required for their homework. My kids get limited computer time. Just because you're the daughter of Bill Gates does not mean you get to play on your computer all day long. Gates also did not allow his kids to have cell phones until they were 14 years old. And the average age, and I think this is too young, I'm just going to give my opinion, the average age now that kids get a cell phone is 10. I think 14 is a much more reasonable age. And his kids all had set times for how much digital usage they could have per day. And they had a set time that it stopped in the evenings so his kids could get the sleep they needed. The late Steve Jobs, Apple Incorporated, co-founder, the guy why we have these iPhones and iPads, in a 2011 interview with the New York Times, this is shortly before he died, he said this of the newly released iPad and his kids, we don't allow the iPad in the home. We think it's too dangerous for them, in effect. Mark Zuckerman, the creator of Facebook, who says the solution to all our school problems, the broken school system, is introducing more technology. And he says he believes Facebook brings people together and he wants the whole world to use services like Facebook and Instagram and WhatsApp. He says this, I want my daughters to read Dr. Seuss and play outside rather than use Facebook Messenger Kids. Like much in life, this can be good, and at the same time, not so good. It all depends on how you use this, how you manage it. Let's pray. Jesus, help our church family, the Holly family, be wise followers of you in our use of digital devices. And Lord, help each parent and grandparent be diligent in... Uh, their role as a parent, as a grandparent to their kids. Help them not be lazy or indifferent, but empower them to see what life could be like in their own lives and in their families' lives if technology is used in a healthy, godly way. And I ask this in your powerful name, Jesus. Amen.